Anyong karing medyo mahaba-habang chikahan to. May nag-comment palagi doon ako nawawala ng audio. True naman. Hello na everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I will be reviewing my old photo shoots from when I was starting out until 2020. So 2008 to 2020, medyo mahaba-habang time siya. So today will be part 1 of this very long episode. But I hope you guys enjoy some behind-the-scenes information on all these shoots. Also, hopefully you learn something new. Kasi for me, learning experiences din lahat ng mga shoots na to. Before I begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updated on my next videos. Kasi may part 2 to. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy! 2008 ako nag-start, third or fourth year in college, gumawa kami ng t-shirt business. It was called Animoism, mga school spirit t-shirts sila. Yun yung reason kung bakit ako um, naging super interested sa fashion photography. Because of that also, since nag-hit nga siya, na-feature kami sa mga magazines, mga teen-oriented magazines. Nakita ng mga editors din sa magazine, yung multiply ko, and I started posting some of my work there. Ito yung parang, I think dito ako na-book. Dahil dito sa shoot na to, si Azel yung model ko. Tapos nilagyan ko siya ng mga, mga graphics, ganyan. Ang naalala ko dito, ang, ang major reference ko was Pepe Jeans na campaign. Cute pa rin naman siya. After nyan, first photography assignment ko was a section sa Chalk Magazine called Chalk Walk. Parang yung picture lang ng mga random students. Tapos i-interviewin ko sila kung ano yung suot nila, ganyan. Kasi nung time na yun, very uso talaga yung mga street style websites like yung Hell Looks, ganyan. Actually, yung picture ako ni Enchong nito kasi parang nakita ko rin siya walking. And then sabi ko, sige na nga, para-paraan. Binigyan ako ng chalk finally ng first ko na yung fashion editorial na marami talagang pages. I think 6 or 8 pages yung first ko na chalk editorial. Si Grendel Alvarado yung model. Siya yung nanalo ng Philippines Next Top Model. Parang ganun. There was one season lang alam ko eh. My God, grabe yung ano, yung filter na ginamit ko dito sa photo na to. Ito kasi yung uso yung mga nylon. Super inspiration talaga dati yung nylon magazine. Very youthful and fun yung mga editorials nila and cool. Yung mga reference ko na ba yung mga Ines and Vinod na shoot. Yung photos na very energetic talaga ganyan. And naalala ko after nung shoot na to, sabi sa akin ni Grendel, the following day, sakit daw nung katawan niya kasi kaka bali bali Kasi simple lang yung shoot eh. Parang ano lang siya. Studio shoot. So, bawi-bawi na lang sa pose. Actually, after noon, pumunta ako New York para mag-aral. Nag-offer ako sa mga magazines like Chalk and Meg nga, since yun yung mga nakapagshootan ko na, na magawa ako ng editorials for them na gagawin sa New York. Sakto, si Ana, si Deco, pupunta siya sa New York to try out modeling also. Nag-contact ako ng mga designers na Filipino designers that time kung pwede silang pahiram ng mga clothes. So, ang dami kong ginawa, I think I did three editorials or four editorials. Isa for Chalk and tatlo for Meg. Guerrilla lang lahat. Tapos, in-email ko lang yung mga modeling agencies doon. Kasi hindi naman pwede si Ana lahat yung model sa lahat ng shoots, ba? Walang bayad. As in, like, parang test shoots lang siya. Sinabi ko sa nabibig editorials, but walang budget. Ganyan. Hair and makeup, nahanap ko lang sila lahat sa Craigslist. That was very memorable. Kasi, akala ko pag-uwi ko noon, magiging okay na yung work ko. Like, parang feeling ko pag-uwi ko, after lumabas yan, feeling ko okay na agad. Bongga na agad. But, actually, hindi siya. Ilang months din akong gumag Doon. So yung mga time na yun, literally nung wala akong trabaho, yun yung lang ginagawa ko mga, mga lookbook ng mga friends ko, ng mga designers, so literally walang bayad yun. Yung time din na yun, since wala nga ako masyadong work, nag assist assist lang din ako sa mga shoot. Kahit yung mga friend ko na stylist, nag assist ako dun sa mga shoots nila, ganyan. During one of my assisting jobs, this was for preview, kinailangan nila ng assistant na nagsushoot din. And then yung photographer is Danilo Hess from New York. So wala siyang assistant na dala sa Pilipinas, syempre. Ako yung nahanap nila and ginrap ko talaga yung opportunity. Sabi ko kahit mag assist lang ako, go, sige. Ayun, after noon, I think napagkwentohan namin to si La Vince sa isang episode namin. Nakita ni Vince yung work ko and nagkaroon ako ng first editorial ko for preview which is Billie Jean. Parang jeans siya na editorial. Matagal ko na talaga siyang dinidream since nag-start ako. Di ba, nandun nga siya sa aking letter to myself. Nung lumabas pa yung editorial, Billie Jean yung title niya. And di ba, parang Billie Jean, BJ din siya. I think yun yung point na sineryoso na ako. Nung ibang tao as a photographer when they saw that editorial, looking at the photos, 
parang sobrang, in fairness, sobrang classic lang talaga nung, nung photos kasi jeans lang siya, ganyan. And sobrang simple lang, yung usual ko na gray background na setup. Yun kasi yung gusto ko nung mga shoots sa preview, parang kahit sobrang simple lang nung brief, parang may something. So eto, sumilagyan siya ng fake na tattoos, naka beehive siya, parang Amy Winehouse. Still very happy with these photos. Yung next ko was another memorable one. Ang dami nag-request nito nung nagtanong ako sa IG ko anong gustong uh, shoots na i-review ko. Yung Apocalypto shoot with Pauline Prieto. Ito yung first shoot with Pauline and I think she was one of my first muses also na para naging regular talaga yung mga shoots namin. Gabi na kami nakapag-start and then sa labas siya ng warehouse dun sa Lumang Summit Studios. Warehouse siya na nasa gitna ng iba-ibang warehouse pa na parang compound. And very simple lang yung setup ko dito actually. Dalawang lights lang. Isang key light ng light na may gel na blue sa likod. Na mas na-mute lang when, nung na-post-process na. Naging serious photographer na yung tingin nila sa akin kasi um, I guess kasi preview din siya and parang naging tumatak din talaga yung editorial na lang na yun kasi it was different at the time also. Ayun, hindi siya masyadong beautiful. Medyo parang borderline scary siya. August, yung Star Magic na cover. It was my first major cover talaga. That day, hindi ko alam na cover yung shoot ko actually kasi akala ko like editorial lang siya, or inside pages lang. Ang sabi nila sa akin, okay, you will be shooting the girls. So si Mark Nick Dao daw will be shooting the guys. So in my mind, kasi sobra idol ko talaga si Mark Nick Dao from since when I was a kid. Hindi naman kid, I was in high school. Inasume ko si Mark yung mag-shoot nung cover, and then sabi nila, ikaw yung gagawa ng cover actually. Kasi yung girls yung cover. Parang ako, oh my god, as in like, nalurky ako. And then, yun, dun na nangyari yung kwento with Christina Hermosa. Nandun siya sa ano ko, Q&A vlog. <laughs> Hindi naman siya super fun kasi sobrang kinakabahan talaga ako nung day na yun. Literally, narinig ko yung mga um, ibang tao sa background na parang siya may photographer na yan, ba't ang tagal, ganyan. Nakikita ko kasi yung mga behind the scenes nila, Annie Libovitz, yung mga um, Variety Fair, ganyan, na sinushoot talaga nila ng separate yung pag mga group shot. At least, makafocus ka on a few girls na faces. Kasi for me, important palagi yung faces ng girls. And then you just photoshop them together para to get their best angles and best light, ganyan. So I guess yung mga tao nun, I don't know, yung mga team, ang dami nila sa likod ko nun eh, cause there were 10 cover girls. May kanya-kanya silang mga ano, mga entourage. And ayun, grabe talaga yung experience na yun. Fairs naman, maganda pa rin siya. I would do less Photoshop. Kasi nung time na yun, parang use yung sobrang photoshop, sobrang filtered, ganyan. Masyado kong na nabura na yun nasa ilalim ng mata nila. Uh, now which I really, really hate pag like, sobrang burado yung mga sa ilalim ng mata. Definitely one of my first big, big production na shoot. And nasungitan ako ng ibang cover girls. Actually, hindi lang si Christine, may isa pa. Pero ayoko lang sabihin kasi <laughs> baka sungitan ulit niya ako. Charot. The most memorable for me in 2011 was my first preview cover that I was really waiting for. Three years before I got my first preview cover. TV's next big superstars, like that. So for me, it's a full circle moment. From being a fan of the magazine. This is T. I always saw the cover that was like a gatefold. It's not that it's a published cover actually. Because we shoot it as a gatefold. But someone sa um, advertising department, mali yung nabenta nila na ad. So, naging dalawa yung cover. So, actually, I was super sad nung nangyari yun kasi hindi, yung original block hindi nasunod. So, they had to reshuffle the girls. Hindi na siya as nice as yung original niya na blocking. Another memorable shoot was December editorial siya with Manuela and Patrick Galang. Si Manuela yung model. Isa rin siya sa mga naging early muses ko na like Pauline, nasa New York na rin. May God, lahat na mag magiging news ko pupunta sa New York, iniiwan ako. Charing. Si Manuela at the time was super super new and modeling. Maalala ko nung shoot na to, umuulan talaga siya and outdoor yung shoot namin. Nagkaroon na parang puddle doon. And I guess yung puddle na yun, medyo matagal na doon. Basta medyo gross siya. Kaya sobrang love na love ko si Manuela kasi pinahiga ko siya doon. Turned out to be parang very magical siya. Um, kasi nag-reflect yung sunset sky na parang makulay dun sa water, it looks photoshop but it's not. It's one of our first shoots. This was for Look Magazine. So si Georgina was always requesting for me and si Georgina had a reputation of being a diva. Yung mga first few shoots na nare-request niya ako, parang tatakot talaga ako to accept the shoots. So hindi ko talaga tinatanggap. And then yung first shoot, first shoot namin, I think it was for Maven Magazine. After noon yun, palagi na niya akong kinukuha, nagustuhan niya yung work ko, and then nire-recommend niya ako sa lahat ng friends niya, like kina Anne, kina Solen, ganyan. And even sa mga brands, like mga bench, ganyan. Sobrang thankful talaga ako for Georgina kasi literally ginaid talaga niya ako from the beginning. Parang siya talaga yung nagsabi sa akin na, actually, dapat yung Instagram mo, yung Twitter mo, dapat name mo. Handle ko was 
Pantry Boy, which is from uh, the Smiths song. Alam mo yung mga cool pa cool but anyway, si George siya lagi yung naging mentor ko, kumbaga. So, niloloko siya palagi na parang, you created me, ganyan, charing. Itong shoot na to, one of our first also, was for Look Magazine. I was medyo experimenting with this kind of lighting na parang puro bounce lang lahat. Actually, yung actual cover, ito yung actual cover na lumabas, and grabe yung pagka-photoshop nung kung sino man yung nag-photoshop nung cover na to. Kasi hindi, ito yung original photo na sinabmit ko. Yung eyes, I guess nadiliman sila. So, binrighten nila yung mata. Binura nila yung texture ng skin. Lahat, okay? Nung time na yun, kasi parang, what will happen is, syempre, we retouch ako ng sarili ko retouch. And then, I submit it, and other magazines uh, would retouch it further pa. I was actually happy with the shoot, but nung lumabas siya pa, sabi ko, oh my God, grabe yung Photoshop. Okay, eto may nag-request nga dito. Yung Michael Cinco ko na shoot. Sa room ko rin ito si Nuz. And then, wala pang budget for smoke machine. So, ang ginagamit namin dito, literally was a baby powder para maging hazy siya. It was supposed to be like a campaign of sorts for Michael in Dubai. But, ayun, naging ano siya. Editorial din siya sa L'Officiel in Dubai. And then, we did this other shoot also. Smoke-smoke effect din sa likod, di ba? But no, it's just... Baby powder. Naalala ko for weeks talaga. May powder talaga. As in, like, dito sa buong studio. Dumikit talaga siya kung saan-saan. Oh my God. Ito, may nag-request din. Preview with Chris Aquino. Also 2012. Uh, so, first time ko mag-shoot si Chris. She only trusts Preview and Liz to be experimental sa kanya. Usong-uso yung print on print nung time na yun. So, she was wearing floral on floral. Tapos yung location, floral din. Super, ano siya, madaldal siya talaga. And ang dami niyang chika. Naalala ko nung ano, isang table doon ng mga accessories. Kasi pag si Liz yung style sobrang dami options talaga niyan. As in, like, literally, yung options niya, sobrang dami talaga. Options, options, options! Tapos may isang file doon na hindi gagamitin. Tapos sabi niya, oh my God, ang cute naman ito! nakita niya yung tag Forever 21 sabi niya So Liz, anong tag natin today? Mumurahin clothes and accessories <laughs> Oh my god, nakakaloka siya May dala akong step ladder nung time na yun cause in case meron akong ano high angle ganyan na kailangan and si Bimbi kept climbing the step ladder Magbo-birthday si Bimbi nun eh so parang may na-rent na siya na parang malaking yung parang malaking balloon na yung, tinatalo, yung natatalunan yung parang play something sabi niya Stop it, you're gonna fall, you're gonna hit your head, and you're gonna die. Sayang ni Red ka for your birthday, ganyan. So, parang tawa ako ng tawa. So, so ang bilis, sobrang bilis lang yung shoot na yun, actually. Kasi sobrang bilis niya. Because she really knows her angles, and pati yung body niya, parang alam niya how to move. And then, that was very memorable. Tapos, after nun, kinukuha na niya ako for other shoots. Esquire, eto. Si Bianca G requested um, to review her shoot for Esquire. First time ko yung shoot si Bianca Gonzalez nito. And si Bianca is always very wholesome, di ba? Siyempre, Esquire, medyo sexy. Nakahiga siya sa tabi ng pool, tapos literally nasa taas niya akong gano'n. And it was so funny. Naging ay siya na lumabas, syempre, kasi it was her first time. And yung napiling cover was, I think she was topless and wearing a bikini bottom. This was natural light, and hindi ako yung nag-edit nito. Catherine's first metro cover. Ito yung first time ko ma-shoot si Catherine ng mature na. Maganda pa rin naman siya. I remember we shot this sa Resorts World, sa Newport Theater. And she was super game, and I shot her with different designers din. Isa to sa mga first din na production design jobs ni ni Barret. Siya yung na, nag-manage ng mga props dun sa ano, sa Resorts World. Yung preview cover ni Julia. Hindi din yung first cover ko with Julia, but this was her first preview cover. Ito yung parang first time na preview cover na medyo casual. Parang they featured someone so young and then naka Doc Martens lang siya na boots. It was very of the time tong styling na ganito. Ito yung uso nung time na yun. If I could change anything, I would change the lighting. Hindi ko alam kung bakit parang flat yung ilaw ko nung time na to. Oh my god, more Esquire moments. Esquire ni Heart. My first shoot with Heart din tong Esquire na to. My girl crush since I was in high school. Sobrang gandang-ganda talaga ako sa kanya. First sexy shoot din ito ni Heart. So parang first time nakita ng mga tao yung like sexy side niya. Hindi yun yung cover na gusto ko actually. I wanted another cover of the same shot but mas ano siya, naka-chin down. She looks good either way. And then, another Esquire moment is Solen. Ito yung first ko na super fully naked na shoot. Classic naman siya lumabas. Turned out super sozzy. And but sa memorable siya for me kasi parang hindi ako sanay talaga mag-shoot ng fully, fully nude person. Like literally, walang, pa walang bra, walang panty. Before nun, mga Esquire covers ko were, were like even Bianca's was a bit friendly. 
but yung kay Hart talaga yung mas sexy talaga lumabas. And before this, parang very, mas associated talaga ako sa mga fashion. I don't know, may mentality na ganun before na parang yung makakapagpa-sexy ng babae is gonna be a straight guy photographer, not a gay photographer. So para after itong kay Hart, parang ayun, ang dami ko ng shoots na mga sexy din. So prove them wrong. Anne Kapal concert. Yung second concert na ni Anne Curtis, she actually got me and Mark, Nick Dow, to do separate shoots for the concert. Actually, the style nito yung ex ko pa. Bad breakup, bad story, but he was a good stylist, I must say. This one was one of the first shoots na para ako talaga yung gumawa ng deck, pati yung styling. Yung suot ni Anne na parang may mukha din niya, kaya I actually shot it a few weeks before. Shoot ko siya para iprint nga dun sa parang bodysuit. Like a week before, naisip ko lang yung Apple. Kasi parang The Forbidden Concert yung ano niya, diba? Tagline niya, yung Anne Kapal, The Forbidden Concert. Naisip ko, yung parang The Forbidden Fruit, ganyan. So nagpagawa kami ng oversized na Apple. It actually became the centerpiece nung concert after namin issues yun. Nagpagawa sila lang, mas malaki pang Apple for the concert. Para naging iconic siya sa era ni Anne na yun. So ang shoots niya palagi is after 4pm uh, call time, always after showtime. And then the direction na yun. This one though, dalawa yung shoot namin na brand. Sanmig, Smart, same studio, different client. And then after nung dalawang shoots na yun, shoot namin tong concert na to. Inabot kami ng 5am kasi gusto ko magpaandar nung may mga tattoo siya. Kasi parang bad girl dapat yung itsura niya dun. Same guy who did the Billie Jean tattoo, did the her tattoo. Tapos sabi nung guy parang, oh ano lang yan, 20 minutes, ganyan ganyan. But no, 45 minutes na ginawa yung tattoo. Kasi na tayo nakatulog na si Anne kasi parang mga 2am na yun or 3am. Turned out to be one of my most memorable memorable shoots kasi naalala ko talaga. After nung shoot, sumakay si Anne sa van, dumiretso siya sa flight papuntang Dubai. Ganun siya ka hardworking. Amazing. So this year, I also shot Sky Ferreira, one of my favorite musicians, especially at the time. Yung Everything's Embarrassing, You're Not The One. Sobrang favorite ko yun because I just come from a very, very bad breakup. I'm still happy with these photos. Sobrang classic niya. I have to thank Sila Raymond Ang for <laughs> choosing me to do this shoot. Yung test shoot ko with Kelsey. Siningit lang namin si Kelsey in one of my other shoots dito rin sa bahay. Sa si Ante, yung makeup. Ito yung start nung naging collaboration namin tatlo. Super quick lang. Parang three outfits, super fast. I think literally wala pang one hour namin ginawa. In-upload ko yung photo ni, ni Kelsey sa Instagram ko. And pinafollow ako sakto nung um, agent from Wilhelmina. And then yun, doon nakuha si Kelsey as yun, first contract niya in New York uh, under Wilhelmina. And yun, nagtuloy-tuloy na si girl. And the rest is history. <laughs> yung first ko na test shoot with Janine, which was picked up by Supreme. This is one of my favorite, favorite photos ever talaga. I don't know, kasi there's something so classic about it. Start ng relationship, working relationship and friendship with Janine and Kelsey. I don't know, parang right timing lang din for for all of us, nung, nung year na yon, nagturi-turi na siya until the next year, which is 2015. Ano muna yung bench billboard, yung love all kinds of love. Si Vince and Nino. Vince is the creative director of Preview, and his boyfriend Nino, matagal na silang couple, so sila yung napilit to be shot for. Um, this bench campaign. So different kinds of love. Lola, Apo, ganyan. Couple na hetero. And then, syempre, si Vince and Inyo yung mag-represent ng LGBTQIA plus community. So dun sa Guadalupe na billboard, nakapaint yung black ng black yung hands nila. And of course, it created a huge issue kasi bakit tinakpan yung hands nila na magka-holding hands lang naman sila. Nag-trending pa yung hashtag na parang paint their hands back. So parang ang dami mga artists na yung photo ng billboard, pinainta nila ng kamay or ginawa nila ng iba-ibang art which was um, a really nice way to deal with the issue instead of just hating on the brand. And I guess it was a learning experience also for Bench. They eventually replaced the billboard. All's well that ends well. And at least nagpag usapan siya also. Oh my god, yung mega 23rd anniversary cover. 23 girls, the most number of people I photo photographed for one cover. Three pages yung gatefold. Naka drawing na to beforehand, of course, kasi 23 girls sila and three days yung shoot. 
kalat-kalat yung girls noon. So kailangan talaga papasok sila like walang papasok na magkatabi ganyan whatever. Iba-iba yung call times nila and iba-iba yung days. So kailangan talaga siyang i-prepare beforehand. By the third day, mainit na talaga yung ulo ko kasi hindi ako yung nag-organize ng shoot, 'di ba? So hindi ko alam kung kailan yung call times nila. But I already gave yung layout na ginawa ko, like yung kung ano yung naka-drawing na sila, yung blocking nila para like alam na namin kung ano yung post nila and para mabilis, 'di ba? Some of the handlers were complaining na na syempre alaga nila ang aga-aga ng call time tapos hindi ko pa siya shoot Keep in mind, there are three pages and yung set namin, ganun din siya kalaki. Like, hindi lang siya one set na maliit tapos imi-mirror lang sa ibang pages. Yung set talaga na pinagawa was for literally 23 girls. Kahit isa-isa ko lang sila shoot Para gagalaw na lang yung camera ko. Third day, sobrang init na ng ulo ko kasi hindi ko naman siya kasalanan. Like, hindi ako yung nag-organize ng shoot. Pag ginaroon niya yung, kasi yung, syempre yung lighting and yung, literally yung camera stand ko, where my camera is standing, naka-lock siya. So, hindi ako pwede mag-move sa next page kung hindi pa tapos yung page na to. Anyway, um, ganda naman siya lumabas. Vice ganda na mega cover. Hindi ako dapat yung shoot nito. And hindi rin dapat si Vice yung, yung cover star. Naalala ko, very super last minute itong shoot na to. As in, they booked me a week or two lang before the shoot and this was in Japan in Hokkaido si Chris Aquino was supposed to be shooting it of course si Marky magsushoot sa kanya for, for this and si Chris Aquino yung pumili nung Japan yung Hokkaido cause she loves yung lavender field I don't know what happened parang ang kwento nun was like her manghuhula yung feng shui expert or something basta told her na bad luck magshoot ng ganitong month dyan sa Japan so na-cancel yung buong shoot so they had to reorganize the shoot and think of another cover person, ganyan. And then, a whole nother team na talaga to do the shoot. Si Vice yung napili nila, which I was super excited to do kasi parang sabi ko, oh my God, someone from the LGBTQIA plus community is gonna be on the cover of a major glossy magazine. So I was like super excited. But yun na nga, since they have already booked the location in Japan and yung mga hotels and everything, we had to rework yung concept to Vice. And then, when we got there, yung lavender fields, hindi na siya lavender, brown na siya. Because apparently, we had missed the yung bloom season niya. I'm proud of this cover because si Vice yung nasa cover. But visually, I could have done a better job. Actually, ako yung may kasalanan kung bakit blonde yung hair niya dyan. Nag-work naman, but it could have been a lot better. If we had time, I think. If we had time and we had the freedom to choose another um, location na talagang babagay talaga kay Vice. Babawi ako dyan kay Mama. This 2021. Janine and Kelsey for Mega. Parang promos of sorts for my book. I'm so thankful kasi they gave um, me a chance to do a cover with my two favorite girls. Wala lang. Um, different looks per layout. Ganyan. Oh my god. Nag-shoot kami from I think our call time was 4 p.m. Natapos kami 5 or 5 or 6 a.m. the next day. First time ko nakita si Janine na parang natulala na lang siya. So 2015 also na release yung Push. That was my first book. First and only actually. Si mga naging cover girls ko is Katrin, Julia, Nadine and Liza. Sila yung mga girls na medyo nakasabay ko when I was starting out in photography, starting to build a name in photography. Sila rin yung mga rising stars nung time na yun. Actually, lahat sila, their first covers, ako yung gumawa. Very first shoot was si Katrin. I remember it was after an endorsement shoot. And she was super game. And late na yun, I think midnight na. Siya pa yung nag encourage na sabi niya, Sige, go lang. Kasi pangalan mo yun nakalagay dyan. Kailangan maganda, ganyan. Sila lahat actually ka-work. Sobrang very cooperative sila. Um, collaborative. Sobrang thankful ako sa kanila for doing the book. Dahil sa kanila, kaya rin nag, nag-trending yung book. And parang first time ko ma-trending yung time na yun. It's all because of all those girls. Kasi sobrang powerful nila. <laughs> parang it really change my career from being someone na completely behind the camera into someone na medyo mas kumaharap na sa camera kasi after nito talaga, yun talaga nag-triple or quadruple yung following ko. And I was so happy with the response and super thankful dun sa buong team na bumuo ng book na yan as in especially si Raymond Ang, editor, because it was his idea for me to, to release a book. We made it work. And ayun na siya ngayon. And I'm so happy ngayon pag may mga creatives, especially mga nakaka-work ko na na creatives na who come up to me and say na inspire sila nung book na to. And then ngayon nakaka-work ka na sila. Kaya ito ngayon, um, itong YouTube naman hopefully will reach another generation of creatives. Sana ma-inspire din kayo.
Okay, so that ends part one of this very, very long video. I hope you guys enjoyed um, my journey, kumbaga, and um, knowing what happened behind the scenes with all these shoots. And if you have any comments or suggestions, don't forget to comment below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get updated on my next video. So see you guys next week.